Hi, Rebecca. You know, we still don't have a firm date on when the attorney general's impeachment trial to take place other than it will happen sometime before the end of August. We did confirm today that Attorney General Kim Paxton is not going to get paid while he is, has been relieved of duty and awaiting trial. And we now know just who's going to prosecute this case for the Texas House. The chairman of the House General Investigating Committee, Andrew Muir, holding the introduction this afternoon in the Capitol Extension. The House prosecutors are well-known attorneys, Dick DeGuerin and Rusty Harden. Both are from Houston. DeGuerin is a familiar face here in Austin from his 2010 defense of Tom DeLay after the former congressional leader was indicted in Travis County for his handling of campaign donations. Harden is best known for representing pro athletes, and he was also once part of the Clinton Whitewater investigation. Today, both said they were shocked by the accusations and the evidence against Attorney General, they say, is 10 times worse than what's been made public so far. The people of the state of Texas are entitled to know whether their top cop is a crook. We intend to present these 20 articles of impeachment in a fair way. This is not about a one-time misuse of an office. It's not about a two-time misuse of the office. It's about a pattern of misconduct and use of the office. This is not about punishing Mr. Paxton. It's about protecting the public, protecting the citizens of Texas. And what he did and through those uh, activities will blow your mind. So, this is a way to say we're sounding the bell. Yeah, now that the bell has rung, the next big issue is what's going to happen to the special session and the game of political chicken that's going on between the House and Senate over which tax plan is eventually going to be sent to the governor. State members, uh, Senate members, and the lieutenant governor, they come back tomorrow after taking a recess on Tuesday, that political misstep Tuesday. Well, it allowed House members to reject the Senate tax cut plan, pass their own tax plan, declare sine die, and go home. Governor Greg Abbott on social media today restated his support for the House plan. Now, I had a conversation this afternoon with political analysts Mark Jones and Brian Smith about this stalemate involving the Texas Big Three. Certainly, the optics are bad. Uh, you had a Republican majority in the House and in the Senate and a Republican governor who all said at the start of the session that property tax relief was one of their top priorities, if not their top priority. Brian, were you surprised that the lieutenant governor started calling out the governor because the governor sided with the House plan? Well, I think we have more of a sibling rivalry than a dislike. And it's a case where mom likes you best, meaning that the governor came out supported uh, the speaker, much to the chagrin of Dan Patrick. Did uh, uh, Patrick burn a bridge with Abbott by going after him like this? Oh, probably not. I think it, it's just, it's just sort of the jockeying for power and jockeying for policy positions. If high noon Friday comes and goes without an agreement and special session one goes down, is this a big loss or is it just a bump of the road and just a hiccup mark? Oh, I mean, I think it's a bump in the road and an embarrassment. Can the House come back? They went sunny die. Can they come back? Sunny die means you are done indefinitely. So it would take a special session to bring them back unless the Senate says, you know what, we're going to vote on that House bill as is, send it right to the governor's desk, which isn't going to happen. The only thing that we might see is the lieutenant governor, instead of closing up shop on Friday, extending it a few days to try to symbolically show that the Senate still is working. <laughs> well, a special session reboot, according to Smith and Jones, will most likely include another attempt at border security bill, which is also part of the governor's call. Or the Senate could just basically sign off on that border bill that the House passed and then just hold firm on their tax plan. It all remains to be seen, uh, though, that if the governor will try to wedge in his school choice plan into this current special session call, if it still is able to, set, to be saved, or if it will come back in the new special session call. A lot of political drama. Now back to you in the studio.